Hey everybody, it's Elias Planakos from Wireless Insider. Today I have with me the brand new Samsung Galaxy Nexus, model number I9250. I'm going to be going over with you the design of the phone, the hardware and software specifications, the turn on time, uh, going over multimedia, web browser, text input, audio volume, and all that stuff. And in the end, a list of small things that you may or may not have known about this phone that may make or break your decision to go out and buy it. All right, you know what? Let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so the Samsung Galaxy Nexus comes in a pretty tall box, considering it's an Android phone. Uh, on the front, you have a picture of the phone there with the name uh, around the right side, right side of the phone. Copyright information, FCC guidelines, blah, 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 and there's a left side of the phone. Serial number on the bottom, nothing on the top. Okay, let's get to it. There we have it, Galaxy Nexus, smiling at us. Cool, let's take this guy out of here for now and see what else that comes in the box. Uh, literature, who cares? Uh, data cable, oh, let's see, data cable, power brick, stereo headphones, and uh, let's see, yeah, just with a simple little clicky button, you know, no multimedia controls, that's fine. And we have a whopping, Nice battery here. What is that? That's uh, 1750 or should be 1750 milliamp hours. There it is. Boom, boom. Cool. Let's get all this stuff on the side for now. And let's take a look at the phone itself. Uh, let's get all these stickers off of it. So where do you go? There you go. Nice. Nothing on the back. Good. So looking at the front, you can see it's a very nice large display. You can see it starts from here, goes all the way down here. There are no physical buttons. In the front, you have a 1.3 mil, uh, sorry, megapixel camera capable of shooting up a 720p video, proximity sensor, as well as the LED indicator light. On the left side, you have volume up and volume down. On the right side, you have the power button and the dock connector. Very cool. The top, nothing. And at the bottom, you have a micro USB charging port with 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the microphone. The back, you have the five megapixel camera capable of shooting up a 1080p video and a single LED flash with a speakerphone down here. And you'll notice by looking at the phone, it is curved. Oh yeah, <laughs> you see that? And this little hump we have down here is uh, something reminiscent of what Samsung is doing recently, including with the Samsung Galaxy S2X and the Samsung Nexus S. So they're keeping that going there. And this is a good way, now that the phone is off, you can really see what the audiophobic coating is. You know, that's what they say the screen has. Well, take a look at the light bulb I have on top and watch what happens when you try going halfway down. It distorts. This is designed to apparently minimize fingerprints, but also uh, try to resist glare. So you see how that's warping right there? Yeah, it's because it's curved and audiophobic means it should be smoother. So. Great, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna throw the battery in here and we're going to see how long it takes for the phone to turn on. Uh, the back, you do have the receiver for the near field communication transmitter, very cool. And my, the uh, SIM card goes in there, battery connector is there, pretty much that's all you have to see. So let's pop the battery in there and see how long it takes this phone to turn on. Okay, so I finally got the battery plate on this thing. Apparently it's really hard. It comes with a little sticker that tells you how to put the plate back on. I suggest you follow those instructions because it's a little tricky. Okay, I'm gonna use my Blackberry Bolt here to time to see how long this guy takes to turn on. So three, two, one. Vibrated, okay. So away we go. All right, while it is turning on, we're gonna go ahead and just go over the specs a little bit. It does have a 1280 by 720p display. It's a 720p display, a very nice Super AMOLED HD LCD display. Tongue twister for you right there. It's a 4.65 inches. This thing is massive. The only thing that comes to mind that could be larger than this phone is the, the Note, but forget about that phone. We're talking about this guy here. An internal memory of 16 gigabytes. There are some variants that include 32 gigabytes. So you wanna keep that in mind. Running Ice Cream Sandwich version 4.0.1. And it does have a dual core 1.2 gigahertz Cortex A9 processor. So very fast. Let's go ahead and see here. It is 28 seconds. Very nice to turn on. That's just one second longer than the Samsung Galaxy S2X, which is a bit faster in the specs department. So very close right there on the top. If we take a look now, we're greeted with a nice home screen. It shows we should unlock. If we scroll away from it shows that we can unlock the phone or we can go to the camera, which is very cool. So if you swipe, swipe left, loads the camera, very nice. And if you don't, it just takes you to the home screen, which we'll stick to right now. So it does come with a very nice layout here, animated wallpaper, big deal, whatever. Let's go ahead and see how navigation is because this is a significant change from gingerbread. So taking a look, you'll notice the physical buttons have been replaced by virtual ones. If you take a real good look, the black is very dark on this phone. So yeah, it looks like there is no LCD there, even though there is. And it's a little recessed into the display, which is pretty cool. It makes it look like it's kind of you know, 
in deep inside the phone so you can reach it very nice uh, you'll notice the normally on android phones you do have a menu button you no longer have a menu button for options this is for multitasking shows you what's running we'll get to that in a sec once we open up a lot more apps and let's zoom in on that note so let's go through the menu click menu button shows you all the apps you have on your phone swipe to the right you know goes through all your categories starts with the apps it moves on to widgets so by default it includes quite a few things so ensure browser calculator calendar clock okay uh, if we keep going widgets are in here so you can't access them anymore from the main screen if you click and hold it'll only show you wallpaper options traditionally on older gingerbread devices you'll be able to access widgets not in this case so let's just go through this see what else we can do all right whole bunch of widgets analog clock bookmarks books email gmail direct messaging google posts a whole bunch of power controls all right let me see what happens when i click that touch and hold already we can rearrange it let's hold this guy Let's put them over here. Why not? Not enough room. Okay, never mind them. <laughs> so let's go back here to move widgets around. Click and hold down the widget, and it'll show you where. I want to get this close so you can see what I see. Little grids show up. So if you leave it underneath, you see a little cross there, right there. If I let go of it, disappears. So that shows you the grid where you can put a widget. If you want to add a shortcut to your home screen, you basically go to the menu, click what you want a shortcut of. Let's go to calendar. Why not? Scroll way back. All right. Click on calendar, hold it down, and it brings you to a home screen selection option, and you can choose which one you want to put it on. Let's go in the main screen, put it down here. That's cool. One thing I did notice is unlike the previous versions of Gingerbread uh, or Android, don't know why it does this, if you want to move these widgets around, uh, the, I, the shortcuts you have don't move out of the way. It just says, no, you can't do that. Kind of weird. You know, Samsung actually had in their older, um, or even the Samsung Galaxy S series, if you did that, they just move out of the way. But in this case, they just stand still and say, no dice. You're going to have to move them manually if you want to. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Now, let's see how this performs uh, from going from screen to screen. This is a very subtle live wallpaper, so I'm going to jack it up to something a little better. Let's go to live wallpapers. Bubbles, halo spiral, microbes. I love microbes. Phase beam, spectrum. You know, very simple. Let's go to um, let's go bubbles. I haven't seen that one before. Okay. Let's set wallpaper. And there it is, all the bubbles dancing around, cool. Go from home screen to screen. Hmm. It wasn't doing this before. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a slight delay when I go from home, from screen to screen. See? Let go, goes, let go, goes, slow. You guys see that? Yeah. Um, it wasn't doing that before, so it may just be the wallpaper. I don't know, but it's ironic because it came with the phone. But let's go screen to screen to see how smooth this guy is. Obviously, with a dual core 1.2 gigahertz processor, it should be smooth. It's not as smooth as I'd like it to be. All right, fine. Let's go from uh, the home screen to the menu a few times, see if it lags. Let's go as quickly as possible. You guys can see this too. Cool fade in effect with the other icons we have. You see them fade into place. Very nice. All right, now let's exit and go into the menu as quickly as possible. All right, a little bit of uh, lag, a little stuttery. But in that case, you know what? Let's just put on a normal wallpaper for the sake of consistency. Gallery, da, sure, let's choose. No, let's do that again. Let's choose this guy, looks cool. All right, so now let's see, is there same, still the same thing? No, seems faster. Access to the menu, speedier. Okay, so it may just be a small glitch. Again, this is the new first device to have ice cream sandwich on it. In this case, I want to also show you it comes with version 401. So you know uh, this is the most up-to-date one. Let's go to the bottom, about phone, version 401 right down there. And yeah, let me just go ahead and do this. Any updates? No. <laughs> it's not really 1130, it just happens at the time. Okay, so there we have it, all the information is there, cool. Uh, this is at 50% brightness. Since we're here, I'll show you the menu. This has changed, especially over uh, on Ice Cream Sandwich. Um, Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth, all the options are up here. You could change some other things, including um, tethering, of course it includes it, near-field communication, and Android Beam, which allows you to transfer media, contacts, and other stuff from one Android device to another. On Blackberries and other devices that have NFC, or near-field communication, you can only really transfer links. I've only managed to successfully on the 9900 to another 9900, only a, a, an HTTP internet link. Um, in this case, if you use Android Beam, you can do multimedia as well. Uh, mobile networks, cool. Let's see what else. Data usage, very funky. So you can see, set a limit and it'll tell you exactly where you stand for your month's usage. So nice to see that's built in. You don't need an app to do that, it's all there. Uh, go to sound. I really like this black background. It's pretty cool, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, volume vibrate, you know, phone ringtone, default ringtone. All right, now let's go to 
display. Let's see how this guy looks with full brightness on. Oh, it's on auto, my mistake. So on the table here, let's go all the way up. Jeez, that'll blind you. <laughs> with a really dark theme of this phone, you don't really need to jack up the brightness. That's what I like. None of this white background BS that we've seen in previous devices, it's all dark. Great. So you won't have to put the brightness up that high. I mean, our eyes can detect white on black a lot easier than black on white. So even at low brightness, well, that's a bad example. Let's go up to 25% brightness, somewhere around here. You can still see what you're doing. This isn't a camera trip, you know? <laughs> that's how it looks like. Let's put it on medium for now. It's very nice. And uh, sleep. You sleep at 30 seconds, auto rotate screen. You can turn off rotation, which is nice. Uh, notification LED light, which is important for some people. Let's keep going. Storage shows you what's running. Okay, that's fine. Battery. Cool. What's using the battery? That hasn't changed either. Applications. What takes up the memory? What's running? Nice and quick. Actually, I'll show you that in a second. It has the ability to be very quick if it wants to be. No lag. Nice. Let's go back. Accounts. Didn't set anything up. Location services. GPS satellites. Okay. Let's go to security. Now, here's where it gets really cool. Security methods. Uh, everything is the same except for the kinds of way you can lock your phone. Slide to lock. Pattern unlock. Pin password or face unlock. You've heard a lot about this. I've tried this out a few times. It's all right. Most of the time I'm not in a bright environment, so I can't really expect it to work, but I want to go ahead and set this up right now real quick and I'll get back to this video so I can show you how it does work. Okay, so now that I set up my face, it's asking me as a backup, if, in case it can't detect my face. <laughs> you can choose a pattern or a pin. I'll choose a pattern. Okay, whatever. I'm gonna choose now. Yeah. Continue, confirm, okay, excellent. So now, if we go out of here and we lock the phone, cool little power off effect, press the button, it's going to activate the front facing camera and it's gonna look for your face. If it doesn't find it, you go to your backup, which is the pattern in this case. If you don't want to even bother with the face, there's an icon down here, that little lock icon, you can click it right away to bypass the camera and do it, so it's a lot faster. Let's see how well this works with my face. Let me get out of here. Couldn't find my face, let's try again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can get this in camera frame. All right. Oh, that was pretty fast. Well, let's try again. Very fast. So a little too quick. <laughs> I don't know how secure it is, but it even gives you a warning. Hey, do face unlock. You have a security risk. So make sure to keep that in mind for occasional use. It's fine. But if you have real confidential data, don't go ahead and do that. All right. So let's go into, why not? Let's go into the web browser. There we go. Google load. Nice. I'm just going to type in some random stuff here. Massive keyboard here on a 4.65 inch display, you can imagine. Uh, what I really like is these are not used by buttons. So you can hold them. You're not pressing things by accident. And uh, I don't know if you notice that these buttons eventually disappear. I want to turn on the camera. Well, you know, we'll get to that in a sec. Let's go to web. And uh, oh, can I butcher that? Works very well, better, right? Meh. Let's try it this way. I'm doing it in here because there is no auto correction, so I deliberately want to see how easy it is. Hell yeah, yeah, I'm not too good in this way. I like it this way, anyways. Most of us text this way, so so let's go ahead and go to where I always go. Let's go to engadget.com. Loading up. Found the website. Okay, let me zoom in a bit here. Great. So I loaded the mobile version. You cannot pinch to zoom in mobile websites, so that's good to know for some people. Let's get out of here. Let's go to the desktop version. Of course, uh, they're having rumors that uh, and, uh, sorry, Adobe Flash is being discontinued. It is, but not on this phone. It does support Flash, so don't worry about it. By default, it will automatically load. Uh, it's still loading there so well. That little bar up there is still loading. I want to see how it works when browsing. Oh, it's done. That was fast. <laughs> uh, wow. Whoops. That thing is just friggin' flying. All right, well, let's see what happens when I do this. Smart ass. <laughs> All right, it actually managed to work. All right, so very nice, smooth. Let's go back here. There we go, rotates in a second. Let's zoom into bold and unbolded text. It renders the text very quickly. Let me show you what I'm seeing here with some zoom in action. Very nice, uh, white is not bright white, which is fine. This is at 50% brightness, but it definitely is very easy to read. I've read many articles on cracked.com and some other ones and got my attention, but uh, yeah, very nice to read on this display. Let me zoom in out very quickly. Cool. Let's get out of here. Zooms out, zoom back in. All right, let me zoom out. Let's put it this way. 
I like that cool fade effect when it rotates. Check it out. Not enough to annoy you, just enough to get the job done. It's perfect. Go to YouTube, access it here. And as always, I search for the movie trailer for the movie 300. Yes, I accept. Meh. Okay, whatever. Let's search. Browse. Search is up there. Uh, very quick. Oh, good time to note, this is on a Wi-Fi connection, wireless N, so it better be fast. Uh, this should be the same one I've been using, so rotate for full screen. Check up the volume. What I like is when you touch the screen, it shows you your commands, and then you can pause if you want to. So, whoop, it's going fuzzy there. Let's leave it here for a sec. Alrighty, let's fast forward a bit. <sighs> why? You know, for such a nice phone, why does the speakerphone suck? Look close. Do you even hear that? Yeah, video is awesome. Not particularly this video, but you know, there's some other ones, but man, that speakerphone is quiet. Okay, <laughs> I was hoping for something a bit louder. Um, what I did find listening to other stuff on this phone, on speakerphone, uh, you can listen to in a quiet environment like right now nice and quiet fine But if you get into anywhere louder than like rumpling paper good luck uh, in bars forget it So you want to show hey bro check out this cool video check out the song Yeah, not happening not in a loud environment even a semi loud environment. You won't be able to hear that So yeah, sorry guys and gals uh, Speakerphone is not that loud, uh, but again, this is still new software and eventually something should come out to fix this As well as everything else ice cream sandwich is still young. Okie dokie all right, so let's take a look at the camera. Let's go ahead and launch this guy. Obviously, as autofocus. It's not a BlackBerry where it's picky, so speaking of BlackBerry, <laughs> let's use it to take a picture. It has autofocus. It doesn't tell you, it doesn't show you visually, but it does automatically focus when you shift from one section to another. So if I move it up, move it back down, it will focus. If it doesn't, you can just tap the screen, uses the flash to focus, finds it. All right, cool. And watch how fast the shutter speed is, guys. Bam, done. Next. You don't even notice you took a picture. <laughs> so let's go in the back here. Let's try this guy one more time. Let's do this because it looks cool. Took a picture again with no flash. Uh, you click here for settings. You have everything flashes on auto. Let me keep it on because things always look better. Let's go back here. Let's see how close I can get. Yeah, make it romantic. Wow, and it's gone. So let's get out of here. Uh, I can access the gallery by going here as well as changing from video to gallery mode, but nah. You notice the icons disappeared there. I'm gonna go ahead and access it from here. Let's go to the gallery, okay? I don't wanna sign into Google, no. Yeah, so, cool. Not many pictures. Let me see what happens when I rotate. Okay, that was a little slow. Let's try that again. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and zoom into these guys here. All right, lefty righty. Smooth, zoom in. Wow. There's no rendering, it just takes, it just works right away. Let's see how quickly I can zoom in here so you guys can see. Nice, so you notice it doesn't keep a thumbnail and then when you zoom in, it corrects it to the right resolution. It loads the full five megapixel cam uh, picture, so when you zoom in, it's ready. <clears throat> Man, you can even see the dust between my keys. <laughs> That's my dirty Blackberry. <laughs> All right, so cool, done. Now when we're in the picture, let's rotate one more time. Yeah, about a one second delay just under you see down here there's little dots indicating where the menu is supposed to be one two three uh, when you tap somewhere there they light up so cool all right okay let's move on to the small things things you may or may not have known about things that may make or break your decision to go and buy the samsung galaxy nexus first of all keep in mind it's the nexus not the nexus s and make sure you say galaxy nexus or else that creates a whole host of problems for the guy you're talking to <laughs> so one thing i did notice as i mentioned in the video widgets have their own category so don't think you're going crazy if you can't access them by pressing the home screen they're not there for a reason uh, apparently that's something that's supposed to be better uh, i prefer the old way but again this is up to preference so it's all there um, some of them you can resize don't really have any here that i can show you but when you do drag and drop some like clock shows you here where you can put them let me go left and where you usually see crosses on the screen uh, let's see if we can see any 
like right there, those crosses, you should be able to stretch them. So some widgets can be stretched and resized, which is pretty funky. Another cool thing is Wi-Fi. Now this took me like 15 bloody minutes to figure out, you know, just getting used to the phone, I suppose. If you go to settings and you want to go into, uh, where are we? There we go, uh, Wi-Fi. Where do you search for more Wi-Fi connections? Where do you go? I mean, there's only mobile networks, airplane mode, whatever. Instead of clicking here, click here. There are your Wi-Fi options. That took me a good 15 minutes, so I just saved you guys some time, hopefully. Uh, connection is there, but here's where it gets cool. Let's go to advanced. I love this, avoid poor connections. So if you only have one or two bars on that Wi-Fi connection, it says, hell no, I'm not connecting you to that, forget it. That's cool because sometimes when you're moving around in the back of a house or office, um, you will lose connectivity. And when you do that, you, your video will stop working, your browsing will stop working, the phone will take about you know 10 seconds or so to switch from Wi-Fi back to the three or four G network. And that's a pain in the butt, especially for video and audio streaming. So that is good to know, you can always disable it. You can even force select the band you want to use. So you know what? I want five megahertz for wireless N, click that and you got it. You want wireless B, G, click 2.4 gigahertz. That's cool, so nice and simple. Also, now that there's no button here to um, get for more options, like there's just this one which shows you what's running. It's a good time to show you how this works actually. So these are the things that are running in the background. You wanna kill them, take it, drag it away. Take it, drag it away. You get the idea, very cool. Uh, although you shouldn't have to do that often since it has one gigabyte of RAM, uh, but here we go. So if you want to get to access more options, let's pretend you're in, I don't know, let's go back to the web browser. And uh, one small thing you wanna keep in mind, this triple three line dot thing, that's how you get more options in the application you're, or what you're doing. Um, that took me about five minutes to figure out. So yeah, <laughs> no matter where you are, click that, you have more settings, more options, more choices by clicking those three little buttons. All in all, it's a great device, very big, very nice. Uh, the small thing also I mentioned in the video is that there are no buttons here that can interfere with you holding the phone. So if you like texting, holding, watching a video, awesome. The biggest gripe I had with the Samsung Galaxy S2X, if you saw that video, is you see when my palm is touching the phone, it would accidentally touch a capacitive button because the buttons were so damn close to each other. But now that they have three, if you touch the corner of these, nothing happens. I mean, it's great. So if you're watching a video holding in your hand and you want to rotate the phone with, like this, you don't have to worry about pressing anything. That was cool. So multimedia folks, this is an awesome idea. Uh, it was very nice with the battery of 1750 milliamp hours. I hope that can cut it. A lot of people have been complaining about battery issues with a lot of devices. Um, it has a lot of settings to customize the phone the way you like it. And it does have a whole slew of black. So no white backgrounds, nothing that can drain the battery. And it's nice to see even at 20 or certainly 30 or 40% brightness, you can still see. And this is at 50% and it's very bright. Uh, and it's pretty good at all viewing angles. And the oleophobic, oleophobic display, as you see how that light, it just, warps it so you don't have to see a reflection like good luck seeing my beard now yeah i know you look at my reflection in my reviews but you can't see me now so in this case uh yeah it's nice to see that's there and overall very powerful very nice uh after a few software updates again this is version 401 ice cream sandwich hopefully it gets better but we will see for now this is last plan knuckles from wireless insider if you have any questions leave it in the section below and if you like what you saw here please rate and subscribe until next time take care